Okay, once again, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm just going to use a little bit of time, maybe 15 to 20 minutes to give you guys a brief overview about this current call for entries and then I'm going to leave the most of the time up for your questions. So again, this is a call for entry for Finchling Gallery opportunities. This includes 2022 exhibitions and 2021 flash projects. If anyone needs to leave this meeting early, again, we're recording for your access later, but I also want to point you to where you can point you to where you can access more information. So the main Salt Lake City Arts Council website is saltlakearts.org. From there, you can navigate to the Finchling Gallery page where you can find call for entry guidelines and a link to apply. I'm gonna show you real quick how you can navigate to that from our main page. So again, we're going to saltlakearts.org. Then you would go over here to programs and click on Finchling Gallery. And you've got some information about the gallery and then some information about the call for entries. At the bottom of that, you've got two buttons um, that are the call for entries guidelines, one in English and one in Spanish. And this guide, this list of guidelines should basically give you all the information you need to apply. General information and then deadlines, links to apply, and the kind of criteria that we will be reviewing in these applications for both the exhibitions and the flash projects. So again, you can access that from our website. And I just wanna cover a few things that, I don't know, might be a little bit not quite in that call for entries. I mean, most of this info is, but it's easy sometimes to just hear it conversationally. And then also I'm here available for your questions. So here's what I'm gonna cover in my brief presentation. I'm gonna give you an overview of the Salt Lake City Arts Council and the Finchling Gallery, and then discuss these two opportunities, and then give you some application tips and then open up time for your questions. The Salt Lake City Arts Council, oh, someone's trying to be admitted. Salt Lake City Arts Council is meant to promote, present, and support artists and arts organizations in order to facilitate the development of the arts and expand awareness, access, and engagement. And the two opportunities that we're discussing today definitely fit within this mission. The other programs at the Salt Lake City Arts Council include the Public Art Program, Living Traditions Presents, the Twilight Concert Series, Grants Programming, and of course the Finchling Gallery, along with other initiatives and projects. The Finchling Gallery is located inside the historic Art Barn building at 54 Finch Lane. This is pretty near the University of Utah. It's located within Reservoir Park. Inside this building, there's actually two gallery spaces that we refer to when we call the Finchling Gallery. When you first enter the building, you enter the East Gallery. It's the larger of the two gallery spaces at 918 square feet. There's the entrance. You can see there's a couple steps but we've also got a ramp to make it accessible. Now, when you walk through the East Gallery, you can enter the West Gallery. And this is the West Gallery space. Um, it's a little smaller than the East Gallery at 550 square feet. You can also see adjacent to the West Gallery, there are these two doors here um, that lead to a patio. Um, which could potentially be used in the flash projects once we're ready to have those in person. Another view of the West Gallery, these doors right here that leads into the East Gallery. Okay, so in addition to the gallery spaces, we offer some other equipment and support to you as the artist. So we've got several pedestals in a range of sizes for displaying three-dimensional objects. Um, we have some digital media that you can use, such as two projectors, a couple media players, and a flat screen TV if you need digital content for your project or exhibition. And then we promote your exhibition or project across our platform. So we put info about it on our website, we put it in our newsletter, our social media platforms, and we send out a press release just to get the word out about you and your project or your exhibition. And then one thing that's kind of unique about the Finchling Gallery is that we're also able to provide a modest honoraria to our artists. Um, for an exhibition, I believe it's $250, and that's per exhibition. And for a flash project, it's $200. And like I said, that's kind of unusual, so I'm proud that we can offer that to support your exhibition or your projects. 
Okay, so as I've mentioned, these are the opportunities we're going to discuss, and these are their deadlines. So make sure you note those. And again, those detailed guidelines and link to apply can be accessed through our website, sawlightguards.org. Navigate to the Finchling Gallery page, and you'll find a link to the guidelines. Okay, a little bit more detail about exhibitions. I imagine you know what an art exhibition is, but the Finchling Gallery exhibitions are specifically designed to give Utah-based artists an opportunity to exhibit their current body of work, to explore exhibitions themes or media relevant to the community or field of arts at large, and to foster the development and curatorial skills through exhibition pr production and collaboration. So we here, we're not a commercial-based gallery, we're just really trying to support the local arts community through our opportunities in the Finchling Gallery. A little bit more about exhibitions, both established and emerging Utah-based artists can apply, and we hold six sessions annually, and these sessions are usually two exhibitions at once, one in the West Gallery and one in the East Gallery. Um, just as I mentioned, two exhibitions shown concurrently. And these can be solo exhibitions, so you can apply for just your own body of work or a group exhibition. Say you have a group of artists with a common theme that you want to apply together with. Um, and these usually last for six weeks. Um, and you can find examples of past exhibits on our website, again, at the Finchling Gallery web page. So the Finch Lane Gallery exhibition applications are reviewed by a committee we call the Visual Arts Committee. And that committee is comprised of members of our staff at the Salt Lake City Arts Council and members of the Arts Council Board, also artists who have exhibited in the galleries in the past and other artists from the community. And in selecting the artists or uh, staff members or board members, um, who are on this committee, we do our best to incorporate equity practices, and we also incorporate equity practices in the items that we consider when reviewing your applications. This visual arts committee changes members annually with each exhibition cycle. Okay, so if you are awarded an exhibit at the Finchling Gallery, um, there are some outreach and engagement that we try to incorporate into your exhibit. I mean, of course, I mentioned we promote it across our platforms. We create postcards. You have the option to give an artist talk. Um, this is usually held during the gallery reception uh, in person, but because of COVID, we have, been not hold, we have not been holding receptions in person. Instead, I've been offering to artists to give a virtual artist talk and the artists can either pre-record their talk and we put it on our website, or we can do a live feed on our Facebook page and people are able to ask questions through the Facebook page and we also record that and make it later available on our website. In addition, you are welcome to promose, propose additional engagement. For example, exhibitions in the past, they've created panel discussions to do with the themes of their exhibition, or you can incorporate a workshop. I am open to additional ideas of engagement for your exhibition. Okay, now flash projects. What are they? These are a relatively new initiative. Um, they began in early 2020. So this is just our second year of creating flash projects. They are short-term interdisciplinary community-oriented and or experimental projects. So generally a project that wouldn't necessarily fit into an exhibition. Um, it was sort of like, fulfilling a need that we saw in the community. We generally hold three flash project sessions a year. Um, and these sessions can range anywhere from a few minutes to five days in duration. Um, and you can utilize some of our other uh, items that we have mm -hmm. at the Finch Lane Gallery and the art barn, such as our banquet tables, our seating and our half kitchen. Examples of flash projects include performances, interdisciplinary arts festivals, audio works, fashion shows, literary events, workshops, experimental film screenings, community gatherings, multidisciplinary projects, short-term immersive projects, et cetera, et cetera. Basically projects within the arts humanities that don't necessarily have a space or the resources to perform their project otherwise, 
and don't necessarily fit into a traditional exhibition. And in a way, because this is such a new initiative, I mean, you guys with your applications, you're kind of telling us the possibilities of flash projects. So I think it's a really exciting new initiative. Um, we've already had our first session of our flash project in 2021. So we have two remaining sessions. Now, as you know, things are still fairly uncertain. And so I would like whoever applies for the June session to plan for a COVID safe flash project. Since our flash projects began in early 2020, the majority of them have actually occurred during COVID regulations. Our very first one in early March was in person and that was a performance. Um, but after that, they all occurred largely digitally, but the artists still utilize um, our resources, such as using our space to film talks and then later putting those recordings on our website or creating like digital exhibitions. Um, so be creative in the ways that you propose a flash project to make it successful in a COVID world. And it's possible we will have the same regulations in September and October, but really, you know, none of, none of us know. We don't have a crystal ball. General tips and advice for both of these applications. Please pay key att keen attention to the review criteria listed in the call for entries guidelines. And again, those call for entries guidelines can be accessed on our website. You go to saltlakearts.org, go over to the Finchling Gallery page and you'll see the button for the call for entries. And it lists under each opportunity, the review criteria for that opportunity. I also recommend beginning your application early. I know this sounds like obvious advice, but you don't need to finish it early. I just feel like if you get like, the wheels turning, ideas will come to you while you're working on other projects. You can always save and come back to it. I basically just mentioned this once you get started, you don't have to keep on working on it, but ideas generally come to you while you're you know, working on something else. Um, especially for flash projects, I recommend outlining a plan of action just to make sure your project is feasible. And also so you can demonstrate to us, reviewing your application, that your project is feasible. Please provide clear documentation of your work examples, because we also want to know that this is another way to demonstrate that you would be successful in implementing your project. I also recommend asking someone to review your application before you submit it. Elaborate, elaborate, elaborate. I think it's just best to, you know, be clear and spell out your intentions. Like, don't assume that we know what you know, if that makes sense. Like if you make a claim or bring up a theme, please unpack it for your audience. Um, be specific and provide details. If you use jargon, unpack it for us. Um, just ensure anyone could understand your intentions. And this is another good reason to have someone review your application before they submit it. Like present it to them without giving them any background, let them read it and then ask them to tell you what did you get from that? What do you think my intended project is? What do you think my intended exhibition themes are? And then that would just ensure that anyone who doesn't know you understands where you're coming from. Okay, these are application tips specific to exhibitions. Please be thoughtful in your artist statement. The Utah Divisions of Arts and Museums once provided this link uh, to give advice on writing a successful artist statement. And I thought it was really useful. I utilize it in rewriting my own artist statement. If you don't, you know, if you like can't memorize this link, just Google the creative independent how to write an artist statement. You'll find it pretty quickly. I would also ask you to write a compelling exhibition proposal. You know, you want to draw in the committee, whoever's reading this. Again, like they don't know you personally, so you want to compel them to understand why whatever you are describing is important to you or important to the community. It doesn't need to be a narrative, but I also know narratives generally capture human interest. Um, of course, take well lit photos of your work. One tip that I've been given is to get two light sources and make sure they're angles 45 degrees away from the object that you're photographing, just to make sure it's well lit from two directions. Okay, application tips specific to flash projects. I would say demonstrate a need of support unique to this program. So as I mentioned before, you know, these are not intended to be a shorter term exhibition. Like think of something that you can't do elsewhere or that you really need our resources to get this out into the community. 
Um, and again, just reiterating that June session may need to be held under COVID safety regulations. So do consider projects that would be successful under the limitations of COVID regulations. So it's possibly something that has a lot of digital content would be great for June. Um, and think of projects which are innovative and timely, like projects that think to what we're going through in our time, something that would really engage the community. Again, have a clear plan of action. Okay, unsolicited pep talk and advice. Whether or not you are offered an opportunity is not a necessarily a reflection on the quality of your work or relevance of your creative practice. Um, as an artist myself, like I know that you will apply to so many opportunities and the majority of those opportunities will come back as a rejection. But the most important advice that's been given to me as an artist is to have grit, to keep on applying. Because again, there's limited opportunities and there are so many artists with relevant bodies of work. And often it's really tough you know, for the review committee to narrow it down because you'll receive really great applications. Um, just keep on applying. Um, and also going along with that, like any work that you put into an application is usually work that you will save in later applications. Like if you put in the time to write a re relevant artist statement that really speaks to your work, you can reuse that artist statement and have like successful applications down the road. And again, have grit, like keep on applying, keep on applying, keep on applying. Don't take, don't take rejections personally, the best you can do. Okay, again, Places to access information, again, go to saltlakearts.org. You can go to the Finchland Gallery page there and find the call for entries guidelines, which includes a link to apply. This is my email address, claire.taylor2 at slcgov.com if you have any additional questions for me. But having said that, it is now time for anybody's questions. You can turn on your video and ask me a question or you can write your question in the chat. Yeah, let's hear them. Um, I had a question about um, like how much time is given for like for the actual installation of uh, the group and solo exhibits? Like, is there a limited amount of time between them? That is a great question. Um, so usually we have like a week space of time for installation give or take. I mean, usually like the Monday before the show opens that Friday, we've got that Monday through that Friday evening to install. Having said that, we have an installer, a professional installer, who does most of the installation work for you, unless you've got an unusual installation, um, then we may ask you to do some of the installation yourself. Does that okay. answer that? Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, I am worried because I think part of my uh, proposal will be like exit or uh, installation on my part. So yeah, it helps a lot. Perfect. Yeah. And I usually try to like work well with your schedule to make sure we come up with a time that works for you and that you have the time to get your installation done. Like I think our next exhibition, the person will be doing the majority of the installation themselves and that's totally fine. And I've tried to work with her schedule to make it work. We have a message in the chat, is there a minimum number of pieces of art you consider in a proposal? Um, I wouldn't say that there's a specific minimum number or pieces of art that we would consider. It's more that does it fill the space well? Um, in my experience with artists is that they tend to like usually worry that they're not gonna fill the space and they usually fill the space just fine. Um, and it's okay to have a little bit of space breathing room between your art pieces. You just want to make sure that the space feels balanced with your artwork. Does that answer your question? I hope. Um, any other questions? Okay, we got a question in the chat. Do you want all the images for the show submitted? No, we don't need all the images for the show submitted. And you will actually notice um, when you go to submit on the submittable page, it will ask you if the image examples that you are submitting, whether or not they're images of the actual work you will be exhibiting, or if they are examples of your past work. So to apply for an exhibit, 
you do not have to have pre-created all of the work that you're going to exhibit. You could have created zero pieces that you're going to end up exhibiting at the time of application. Um, you can just show like examples of past work that shows us your style and shows us that you are capable of creating the body of work that you're proposing. Just ensure that whatever you're proposing, it's a realistic amount of work that you'll be able to complete in time for the exhibition. Does that answer your question? Um, I've got another question. You have a number of new MFAs attending. Comment on Finch desires regarding showing work just shown at you or elsewhere. So on the exhibition or the call for entries guidelines, you will see that we do request work that hasn't shown in Utah within the past year. Um, if it's like, you know, a couple pieces that have shown in a group exhibit that is going to be part of your solo show of work. Um, if the majority of work has not shown in Utah in the past year, I think that's fine. Say, for example, it was like a couple pieces that show showed as part of a group MFA, MFA show and you're showing it as incorporated into a body of work that you have not shown elsewhere. I think that's fine. Any other questions? These are great questions, guys. Thanks for not leaving me here alone without any questions. Um, I had a kind of related one again. Um, during the application, uh, how much like detail do you want us to go into um, for the actual installation of our stuff? Is that going to be used as like instructions for the, the installer there? Um, so I, if you are awarded an exhibition, I will get in touch with you for like the details of in installing your work. So you don't have to put in all the details of how you would install it, unless it's like something that's, you know, out of this world wild, that it would be hard to envision how it's done, then maybe give us a little bit of details. But I don't think as far as like general installation details that you need to give a lot of details in your exhibition proposal. We mostly want to see that it's like something compelling and relevant and meaningful and that you can execute it well um, and that you have, you know, a relevant, interesting, uh, well done body of work. And also I should say, um, one, one of the things that the committee considers is making sure we have a variety of media presented. Um, so say like we get, you know, a ton of uh, proposals that have to do with, um, the meaning of trees. You know, we might not select all of those, even if they're all great proposals, just to make sure we're presenting a variety of media and a variety of themes. We have another question in the chat. Who are the current members of the committee? I don't think I'm going to make the current members of the committee um, public right now because we're still forming the committee. And also, I don't want to leave them open to be solicited for questions. I think I'll just open myself up for questions, though I can say I will be a member of the committee and the director of the Salt Lake City Arts Council will be a member of the committee. And then in addition to that, it'll be a member from the Arts Council board and some past exhibiting artists and then other artists from the local community. Okay, the application says works that haven't been exhibited in Salt Lake City. You just said Utah, which is correct. Oh my golly, Rob, you have just pointed out some conflicting information. Um, let's go ahead and say works that haven't been exhibited in Salt Lake City within the past year, just to keep it consistent. So if, you, if it has exhibited in Salt Lake City in the past year, maybe not. If it is exhibited elsewhere in Utah in the past year, go ahead and apply. Thanks for pointing that out, Rob. I think I maybe missed a question. How long is any particular exhibit? How do you handle the sale of work? Great questions. So each exhibit is six weeks long, which is kind of unusual for Salt Lake City because most galleries locally exhibit for three weeks long. Um, and how do we handle the sale of work? So the Finchland Gallery generally takes a 30% commission of any sales, 70% goes to the artist and the gallery themselves handles the sale of the artwork versus the artist. We have been toying around recently due to COVID of uh, creating options to purchase artwork on our website. 
How it's been handled historically is that people would go through our office manager to purchase the artwork. But it's looking likely that we will do it online. But regardless, the Salt Lake Arts Council will handle sales of the artwork. Though along those same lines, um, because we've been opening up sales on our website um, and creating online exhibitions on our website to coincide with our in-person exhibitions, um, we have had some people interested in buying work that are from out of state. And I think going forward, if any work is purchased from out of state, we would have the artist handle shipping. So if you as the artist don't want anyone to purchase your work from out of state, say you want them to be able to pick it up in person, then you can make that designation. You just need to tell me beforehand. We got another question. Is one disadvantage for having had previous Finch Lane shows in the jury process? So that is something we actually consider, um, whether or not someone has received an opportunity from the Finch Lane Gallery in the past. It doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting another exhibit, but it is considered just to make sure that we are spreading around the opportunities that we have because we have a limited amount of opportunities. But I would still say if you have had an exhibit in the past, go ahead and apply because we have, you know, awarded exhibits to people who have applied again. But again, we do take it into consideration just to ensure we are spreading around our opportunities to multiple applicants. Great questions, guys. This has been a very fruitful round of questions. Any other questions? You had mentioned earlier that in your application, it really helps to consider what makes your space like specifically unique and what makes projects fit for that space in particular. Um, what does make your space, in your opinion, like more different from other venues or avenues of publication, I suppose? That is a great question. So you're thinking specifically about flash projects. Um, so one of the things that are unique to flash projects is it doesn't need to be something that's specifically an exhibit. So say like you have something that's performance art that's hard for you to get out into the world. Uh, that would be something that would be unique to that specific opportunity. It's also like if you have performance art and you want a more public audience for it. Like that's one thing we have access to, you know, we are um, a city entity. And so we have, you know, access to platforms that many people across the city will be able to view. Um, and so say like you have a project that you feel is very relevant to the citizens of Salt Lake City. Um, that would be one reason to apply for that. Um, though it doesn't necessarily need to be something that you would view as relevant. It's more just maybe you have a great idea and you want a wider platform for it or you have a great idea and you feel like the Finchling Gallery space would be great to hold that idea, like that we've got a large wide open space with some equipment that an artist might not necessarily have access to. Um, I feel like I could elaborate more on that, um, but I hope I answered your question. Let me know if you want to, any more details. We got another question in the chat. Are there restrictions on subject matter or media? Does it need to be SFW? I don't know what SFW stands for, but I can respond to the last rest of the question. And if you wanna tell me what SFW stands for, please feel free. Um, safe for work. That is a great question. Um, so you may even notice on the call for entries guidelines um, that we do reserve the right to decide whether or not something is appropriate for a publicly funded space. And so that is one thing about the Finchling Gallery is it is underneath the Salt Lake City Corporation. It is funded by Salt Lake City. And so we do have to consider uh, projects and whether or not they are appropriate for a publicly funded space. So that is a great question and thank you for bringing it up. Having said that though, you know, we also like try to bring up topics um, or, or give a platform to topics that, you know, it's possible they might be a little bit controversial, but they still, still still need to be appropriate for a public audience. But I would still love, you know, work that speaks to like current themes, um, you know, current issues in our, in our world. You know, we don't all agree on our current issues, 
uh, presented in society right now and projects that speak to that I think are very relevant and in interesting and would still be appropriate for the space. Um, but do acknowledge that, uh, you know, this is a city funded space as well. I hope that answers your question. And if I answer any of your questions uh, incompletely, let me know if you need me to elaborate in any way or have a follow-up question. Another question in the chat. I produce my art in editions of multiples, reproduction, re reduction line of blocks, excuse me, reduction block prints. Are you able to sell unframed works or can works be sold as prints only? Rob, I would say yes to that. And actually as a fellow printmaker, I would love to like make that accessible to you. So yes, I would say yes, though. Um, yeah, I would say yes. Another question, oh, uh, thank you, you are welcome. Any other questions? Here's a question. Is an artist's work curated by the gallery? Great question. So in general, um, we usually go with the body of work that the artist proposes, um, but we do reserve the right to make the final selection on the artwork. Um, for the time that I've been with the art, with the Finchling Gallery, that has never been an issue. It's always been fine to go with the work that the artist presents. Um, as far as curation, I generally like to give the artist the opportunity to decide where they want work to be in the gallery. As an artist, I appreciate being able to do that. So I've tried to like offer that same thing for the artist, but you know, if something seems like it might be an issue, say like artworks in a place that would be obtrusive to, you know, make the space accessible to anyone, then maybe I'd say that needs to be shifted or if like a particular piece of work uh, seems inappropriate for a public space, then I might say that we can't show that piece of work. Um, though, again, I doubt that being an issue, I have not encountered that yet. Um, so in general, if we award you an exhibition in general, you're able to produce work um, as you please, as long as it fits within what you originally proposed. And also, I guess going along those lines, one of the things we do is, you know, between two to three months before your exhibition, I usually give a studio, pay a studio visit to the artist. Um, sometimes it's virtual in a COVID world, sometimes that's in person, but masked and social distancing, um, just to sort of get an idea of what they're creating, you know, and assure the artist you're on the right track, you know, be able to answer any questions that the artist might be having um, for me to get a better feel for what the artist is creating just so that I can speak better to their artwork because sometimes, you know, we'll do interviews about the current body of work. Um, so in general, if you are awarded an exhibit, I want it to be an, actual, a, an actualization of your creative vision. Any other questions? These are like really, really great questions. Going along with the curation question, um, sometimes people propose a show where the person applying for the show is proposing to curate an exhibit of a group of artists. And that's also a possibility. So like if you wanna to propose to be a curator and you are presenting a feasible plan uh, with a compelling proposal, then that's also a possibility too. Any other questions? I'm super excited that you guys are asking questions. It makes me glad that we had this session. Um, it also makes me excited that you're all engaged and interested in the gallery. Well, things are pretty quiet. I will hang out a few minutes longer just in case 
anyone ends up with any questions, um, you're also welcome to email me, claire.taylor2 at socgov.com. Claire is spelled C-L-A-I-R-E. My question, Claire. Yeah. When um, galleries like yours are um, looking at an artist who's proposing new work that isn't made at all yet, um, and you're just looking at their past work, how do you look at that and consider it in relation to like how well you think they can actually achieve future project goals? That's a great question. Um, so we generally look at the quality of work, um, the work examples that they're showing us, um, to, just to make sure that the person is capable of creating the work they're proposing um, and also capable of creating the quantity of work that they are proposing as well. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. 